Hey to YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be doing a review and demonstration on the Milwaukee Mini Polisher. This is one of those tools that I didn't know I needed it so bad until I had it, but now I've got it. I'm very impressed with the performance, but we'll start by doing a bit of an unboxing Give you guys a look at what you get in the kit. As you see here, it comes with a handy little bag. So you're fully mobile, no mucking around, looking for airlines or power leads. Uh, just charge your batteries up and you're fully mobile. It does come in handy for me. Sometimes my boss grabs me out and does touch-ups and things like that for customers. So between the car having an accident and being booked in to actually be repaired, they'll come in for a quote, but that might be two months before their car is actually able to be booked in. So in the meantime, sometimes we'll just polish up and improve and do a little touch-up. So it's really handy for that. The boss doesn't even have to bring the car into the workshop near the airlines. So I can just come out, zip, zip, do a little bit of buffing. All that aside, you can see that it comes with two two amp hour batteries and the charger, although it's not a fast charger, but it's more than enough to charge those M12s up. I didn't realize that it came with the two batteries. I thought it just came with the one. So when I bought it, I actually went and got myself a spare six amp hour battery. I did realize that as soon as I opened it, I'm like, okay, so it comes with two batteries but I did decide to keep the six amp hour and I'm glad I did because it really does last for quite a lot longer than the two amp hour batteries. I find myself not really using those two amp hour batteries much at all. So it's got two speed settings on it. The first setting is 2800 RPM and the second one is 8300. I find myself not using the second setting at all, except when I want to do some cleaning out of buff pads. So any Velcro pad will fit onto it. So what I find myself doing, so these days I've actually been keeping my buff pads much cleaner. So at the end of each polishing session, I'll give them a good clean out like you see here, and then I'll throw them onto my mini polisher and give them a good spin out to dry them out so that they're dry for your next session. So another thing I've been onto recently is just buying some better quality stuff. So over the years, you you know, we've all done it. We've all tried saving a couple of dollars and just get one of the cheap ones but they either don't last or they're just not quite up to the task. So that happened with my mini polisher. So I actually just got myself a drill. I thought, you know what, I'd be able to use this drill as a mini polisher and it really just didn't cut it. It was an ultra cheap one from Super Cheap Auto. And look, I don't regret buying this one at all. So this thing comes in at Australian dollars, $350 for the original kit. And then I got that six amp hour battery for an extra $120. Uh, as I said, I probably didn't actually really need it, but I don't regret getting it. So this was the first job that I ended up using it on. I actually had three bumper jobs that I'd sprayed the day before, had them all lined up in a row, and I had all three of them buffed within about 20 minutes. So between the Flex Orbital Polisher, which you see here, and the mini buff, I had them all done in a very short amount of time. No mucking around with either airlines or power leads or anything like that, fully mobile. So that's another thing. If you are one of those mobile details or mobile spray painters, look, you've probably already got one. You probably don't need me to tell you to go and get yourself a cordless set up but on the other hand there may still be some people out there running air tools off their compressors and if it was me if I was to go mobile I'd be trying to use the compressor only for spraying if possible so I'd try to get as many electric battery powered tools as possible so look obviously certain things you may not be able to get like you might not be able to get yourself a battery powered orbital sander. I know they are out there, but they seem like from the research that I've done, they seem to be more either the 80 mil or 75 mil pads on them. And the other ones seem to be more home use. So they've got like 125 mil pads on it, whereas most automotive sandpapers are 150 mil. But as I say, I don't know absolutely every tool that is on the market and there may be an answer for those issues. But yes, as I say, I would try to eliminate as many air powered tools if I was mobile. So this is another one of the jobs that I did early on. So this was a Land Cruiser bonnet and there really wasn't many D nibs in it. Look, if there was much more than there was in this bonnet I would have gone 
for a big buff, but there was literally a handful of nibs in it. So I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna use my mini polisher on it. Plus it was new and I just wanted to use it. I was having fun using it. Now, as far as battery life goes, that six amp hour got me through an entire week of work and I was using it every single day like I use it for lots of different things so as I mentioned at the start I'll use it for little buff ups I'll use it for spot polishes I'll use it for denibbing sometimes if there's just a small job like this bonnet and I do get quite a lot of use out of it I'll also use it for prior to doing a spectro reading when you need to shine the old paint up to take your photo so I do use it for quite a few things and that six amp hour battery got me a full week um, however, once I put that onto charge, I drained one of the 2 amp hour batteries before the 6 amp hour was even charged. So those 2 amp hour ones that do come with it really aren't the best. And I, look, as I say, like you might get yourself started off with those two, see what you think of the tool, but just keep in mind that down the track, if it gets to the point where they're just not quite keeping up with your expectations you can go and get yourself the slightly larger battery so I thought I'd give you guys a look at what I ended up putting in my little bags here so I'm pretty much fully mobile now when it comes to polishing which I've really been enjoying now you see here I've got a couple of different polishes different compounds in those little sample bottles I've got some sandpapers I've got the buff pads those orange and black buff pads are actually a little bit better than the ones that do come in the kit. However, the ones that do come in the kit are better than what I expected, to be honest. They're definitely more than serviceable and they're also cheap. I saw them for $12 to replace them. I was so impressed with this little tool that I couldn't help but go and get the Big Brother, which is the full-size buff. I will be doing a review and demonstration on that. And I will have to say now that there is a bit of a surprise in that video. I was a little bit let down by it. So yeah, I had a bit of an issue happening. But I'll leave all of those details for that video. So be sure to check that one out before you go and buy one of the full size buffs. But yes, that will be coming up soon. This is just another look at some of the things that you can do with it. A full size buff is going to go and burn through all of those edges on something like this. So that's why you really do need a mini buff for polishing things like window frames, even door jams. Like I did a full buff and polish all over on that Land Cruiser bonnet that you saw me do a few minutes ago. So the rest of that job was actually a full buff and polish all over. Now because I had this mini polisher, I gave the door jams a quick zip over because it was just such an easy job to do. Now usually I would never do something like that on a buff all over, but as I say, it was so quick and easy to just quickly zip zip over the door jams. I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. And to me, it's one of those minor details that does make a big difference to the finished product, you know? So the customer's gonna get their car back and they won't know exactly what you've done, but they'll know that you've done a good job, if you know what I mean. They don't know how you got there, but they will know that you've done a good job. It's a funny thing how I used to hate polishing, but now I don't mind it. I think a big part of it was that I hate redoing things. So if I do something, I like to get it right the first time, and what used to happen quite a lot was I'd do all the buffing and then you'd get it out into the sun and then you'd see more sanding scratches or whizzy marks and then you'd have to get it back in. And I think the thing that's made the biggest difference to me is something as simple as using that headlight. It's like a $25 uh, light that came from eBay. It's got a high luminosity. So I think it's like a thousand lumens or something like that. I know exactly where I'm at with the polishing stage before I even take it outside. And sometimes that light will show you even more than the sunlight, depending on how sunny it is at that day. So this is another quick look at that second attachment that I was telling you guys about. So that takes the roll lock discs. So that can be really handy for stripping paint off. So I could actually imagine this being a really handy tool, even for a panel beater. You could literally just use it as a little roll lock grinder. It does run for quite a long time, especially with that six amp hour battery. So yeah, the, the, for the sake of not having to constantly reach over for your airline or your power leads, it, I can see panel is actually getting quite a nice amount of use out of it. This is another thing you can use it for. Now that's not actually the right sanding disc for it. That's something that I just rigged up. We don't have the 75 or 80 mil sanding discs, but that's another thing that you could use it for if you wanted to. So once I got this, it got me thinking, gee, I wonder if Milwaukee do a mini orbital sander and it turns out that they don't unfortunately 
Now there is a brand that does it and that is Flex. It's a little bit pricey, but it's actually two tools in one. So this one that you see on the screen here, that's actually a orbital sander and it's also a mini polisher. So I'm actually gonna go get one of them, but just be warned, those things are quite expensive. They're twice the price of this. So that's my review for the Milwaukee mini polisher. I'll definitely give it two big thumbs up and I doubt that there'll be any people out there who regret getting one. I think it's reasonably priced. I don't think it's overpriced. I don't think it's too cheap. It's a good quality tool. You know when you get your hands on a tool whether or not it's good or poor quality. So you're actually kind of buying into an ecosystem as well. So now that you've got the charger and the batteries, you can go and buy skins to other Milwaukee M12 tools. One last thing I forgot to mention earlier is that it's nice and quiet. So I find that I don't need to put earplugs in when I'm using this. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further, you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favorite is those spray suits. So they're a good quality Colad branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts. So be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.